Hello, Horus Heresy fans. Welcome to Heresy, the Horus Heresy talk show. In this episode, I'm going to be telling you about 10 strong Space Marine units that you can use in your games of Horus Heresy, the Age of Darkness. So let's get to it. So firstly, a few notes on what we're about to talk about. These are not the best 10 units. This is not a tier list. This is not put these units in all of your armies at all. Because there's lots of things that change what things you want to run in your army in a game of Horus Heresy. So you've got unique units, which you know, you're going to want to use a lot. You've got the effects of the army traits on your units. So some units will get better in certain armies. Some units that are not on this list are great in certain armies. And some units that are on this list are bad in certain armies as well. So... You need to factor lots of things in. This is just a list of 10 units that are great that you should consider. Right to War also change things, so they you know can wildly change the way units work in some circumstances as well. And you've also got scenarios and you know the things that are in the rest of your army. You know, you've got to look at your army as a whole and not just a collection of you know individual individual potentially powerful units. Also as well, bear in mind, there is the whole narrative and flavour side to it as well, which you should always bear in mind when building an army for Horus Heresy. So just picking units from a list like this is not necessarily going to get you an interesting army for you or your opponent either. We'll talk about that a bit later, but just bear in mind that this is not a conclusive list. This is just a list of 10 units that I think are really good and you should be considering putting in your army. So in 10th place, we've got the Reconnaissance Squad. I really like Reconnaissance Squads. The th amount of things that these bring to your to your game is really good. So they are a troops unit, first of all. So they fit into that nice troop slot. So they're not using up, you know, spaces other units could be taken up. They can bring Nemesis Bolters, which is, I, I think, my favourite way to use these. So for 135 points, you get five of these guys with Nemesis Bolters. Nemesis Bolters have got a 72 inch range, which is really good. So you can sit these guys way far back on the battlefield. They've also got Shroud Bombs, so the opponent has to add 6 inches of range when they're shooting them. So a lot of the time, those two things combined, it's going to be very hard to shoot a Recon Squad. And also, they can bring an Augury Scanner as well, which means that they can shoot things with Interceptor when they're turning up on the board. So maybe they can shoot with their Sniper Weapons and Pin infantry that are deep striking or something like that and they can shoot ignoring night fighting from their nice safe at the back of the battlefield position alternatively they can scout and infiltrate so you can equip them for close range and they can do interesting stuff as well their line which means they're scoring which is not that easy a thing to come by in the game really you know outside the tactical marines not a lot of stuff is really line so the fact that you've got a scouting infiltrating unit that can do all these different things is just really good and they're a great addition to your army they look cool some great modeling opportunities there may be a unit that you wouldn't have in your other army otherwise as well so they give your army a little bit of diversity in units too so number nine we've got the rhino the classic rhino and, you know, I don't think a list of 10 of the best units in Space Marines would be complete without including the Rhino. One of the big things in gaming, in all war gaming, is always mobility. And you want to get your men around the battlefield, particularly in this game, where men can easily be shot off the board by certain weapons and men are a little bit slow. Rhinos get you where you need to go. And for just 35 points, it's such a big upgrade to almost any unit that can take them now they are very fragile so in some circumstances you might not want to take them because you don't want to put your 10 men in a little metal box of death but you know you're going to have to make the decision when you take them but they are very cheap for what they do also as well extra things that they do so they can bring a searchlight which is really good you know just five five more points lets you add a searchlight to your army which can really help in night fighting situations also as well you can use them to block line of sight and for anyone who considers that to be maybe a little bit of a you know power gamer style thing to do this is what apcs do in real life this is what tanks have done in real life since tanks were invented they have always been mobile cover for infantry it's one of their primary uses as well as everything else that they do be a mobile cover for infantry so don't be afraid to use your rhinos to protect your men who are walking up alongside them or after they've jumped out the rhino as well so there's a lot of stuff that rhinos do it's very cool and for just 35 points especially given how cool they look and how, how cool the deimos version looks in particular for me 
they're definitely a great thing to have in your army. At number eight, we've got the Javelin. The Javelin being a pretty expensive Forge World model is probably one of the reasons you don't see quite as many of them as I think you should, because they're just so good. Number one, they look incredible. Like, I don't like the way land speeders look, any of the versions of land speeders really, but this version looks awesome. And they just bring so many special rules. They deep strike, they outflank, they come with big guns, you know, two las cannons and a multi melter potentially as well. When you can just, you know, bring these on in the side of some vehicles, you know, or wherever you want, pretty much. It's so good and they're not very expensive doing it either. They're also actually kind of tough, probably in a lot of ways because of the ways the rules work now. They're tougher than a lot of vehicles because you've at least got to do a few wounds to take them down. Now, they can be hurt by small arms, which does change that a little bit. You know, you can bolter them to death, but, you know, you're probably going to want to shoot them with bigger guns. And, you know, they're quite quite tanky for that as well. So it's just a great package. Just adds a little bit extra to your army. They come in the fast attack slot, which isn't a slot that a lot of armies use anyway so you know a unit of one two or three of these maybe just gives your army something a little bit different that it does a little bit of extra tactical options and interest and also they're just really good at doing it as well coming in at number seven we've got the leviathan dreadnought so the big mac daddy of all dreadnoughts he's he's big he's expensive he's hard to kill and he brings some real serious combat and shooting power to the table and is just generally a super good model. Like, I'm pretty sure everyone loves Dreadnoughts in all of their forms. So, but by the Diredio for me, I think it looks kind of dumb. But Leviathan Dreadnoughts just look absolutely fantastic. Now, their firepower is quite short-ranged, and that does limit them a little bit in what they can do compared to other, to, compared to, like, Contempt of Dreadnoughts with Laz Cannons or something like that. But they do have the buffed-up stats. You know, their toughness 8. they got a lot of wounds. They're just generally very hard to kill. They've got... Strength 8 Hammer of Wrath attacks. You know, they can instant death Terminators when they charge them if they fail their save. They've also got move through cover as well, which is great. You just do a lot for their points. Now, they are quite expensive. They are coming in at 300 points or maybe a little bit more once you equip them, which is quite a lot of points, but they they, they do a lot. The only thing with them is they can be avoided because they are on the slower side and their ranges are a little bit short, but certainly putting a Leviathan Dreadnought in your army, you're never going to regret it. It's always going to do good stuff for you, and it's always going to look awesome while it does it as well. Coming in at number six, the Heavy Support Squad. So I really, really like what this edition has done with heavy weapons, mainly because it's made heavy weapons better. It's given them new special rules. So Laz Cannons have got Sunder. multi melters have got those two shots. Armor Bane with Twin Link now as well. Auto cannons have got rend. You know, there's lots of changes to heavy weapons to make them good, but mostly they've also got cheap enough to actually be worth taking on Space Marines. So a heavy support squad can bring an awful lot of guns for you know not many points. Now they're not they're not overly cheap. They're not so cheap you just use them and, and never tanks or other things, but they do bring a lot of guns in one place. So six or seven of these guys may be all equipped with you know good high-end heavy weapons like las cannons it's coming in at like 200 points and that's quite a lot you can give them an augury scanner so they ignore night fight and get free interceptors as well which is also really good when you've got a lot of guns concentrated in one place and they can be quite difficult for your opponent to shoot at profitably unless he pins them or something first because when they do that return fire reaction there's a lot of guns hitting the opponent as well you know if you've got seven las cannons all in one place and they try to shoot you off They've got to take seven last cannons first. I think heavy support squads are fantastic. There's loads of ways to support them, whether that's with psychers giving them an invulnerable save, heralds or something else buffing their leadership up. They're really good, and they can add a lot to your army, and I think that lots of the weapons are good on them as well. You could easily take lots of different heavy support squads. You could take a Volkite squad, a last cannon squad, a plasma squad. A multi-melter squad would be particularly good in something like Death Guard, where they can actually move would be awesome as well missile launcher squad if you need to cover that flak base and you want the ability to maybe pin and also shoot things with a high strength weapon you know a little bit less good at all of them but cheap and very flexible there's just so many things you can do with a heavy support squad and for that reason i think they're a really good addition to any army coming in at number five we have the humble apothecary now apothecaries 
give you a feel no pain save and they just join your unit and that's what they do pretty much don't do anything else it's just really good because the other squads in the game have gotten you know pretty good tactical squads heavy support squads etc etc it means apothecaries are good by default as well because just making those squads better more survivable for a reasonably cheap 45 points investment is just a great thing to have access to and also a special mention here to the primus medici console as well it basically does the same thing but for units that usual apothecaries can't join it's just a really good thing to have access to it's a thing that a lot of people are going to be using you can take a whole lot of them for one elite slot as well in your army they're just very good and very cool and they're going to be around a lot coming in at number four we've got the contemptor dreadnought now i don't think this will be a surprise to anyone that the contemptor dreadnought is just really really fantastic in these rules it's very tough with its toughness seven and six wounds it's got a two plus save and an invulnerable save and it's immune to instant death and all of this comes in a cheap package as well with the option to be good in melee or good at shooting or both as well as the helical target array which gives it some advantages in interceptor and skyfire these things just do everything really and cover a lot of bases for you in terms of anti-tank anti-infantry melee you know being able to profitably fight with things like terminators and you know punch them to death with their big fists they're just really good and as well as i mentioned earlier with the leviathan they look cool particularly this one that's on the screen the alpha legion contemptor from forge world i think is probably one of my favorite models but even the the new plastic ones that have come with age of darkness that are a bit plainer also look great dreadnoughts just look great so for all those different reasons contemptors are very high on this list and i think you will see lots and lots of them on the tabletop which is which is fair coming in at number three we've got the cataphracti command squad now this might be a surprising inclusion but terminators in general are just very good so they're, they're really hard to kill they got two wounds lots of the weapons that can go through their armor aren't strong enough to wound you know to do instant death them so that you get use out of those two wounds and they're really good in melee which is really important in this edition for you know pushing people off objectives and that kind of stuff but the cataphracte command squad as opposed to just normal terminators just has some really really great benefits so firstly it comes with a standard a, a legion standard that means that you've got that bubble of leadership 10 which is super important in this edition but also as well it makes them line now a terminator squad that can hold an objective is just phenomenal it's really really good whether it's holding your home objective or whether it's an assault unit going to push out your opponent off their objectives and then actually score them it's just a really really great thing to be able to do it does mean you need to keep that banner alive to get those benefits though but that's a thing that's not super hard unless the opponent's dedicating a lot of sniper shots to you as well these come with weapon skill 5 which is a really really big deal now in this edition of the game anything with weapon skill 4 is really going to struggle when it fights things with weapon skill 5 and there's a lot of particularly legion specific units around that have got weapon skill 5 that are just going to give you a really really hard time in combat no matter how punchy your power fists are you're going to struggle in those combats and the cataphracti command squad means that every legion's got access to a weapon skill 5 assault unit that's pretty powerful so i think these are really good and as well as not taking up a slot as well when you bring them as a retinue so that's also a nice thing too so it does mean you have to bring a character to bring them but i don't think that's a problem for most of us generally and yeah i think you should really consider using these in your games and speaking of characters coming in at number two are the consoles so i've lumped all these together in one otherwise they they would take up probably half the list consoles are really cool they add a lot of interesting abilities to the army they do lots of interesting things to your units they buff the units up they change the way they operate and they are great opportunities as well for modeling characterization kit bashing all that kind of stuff they add a lot of flavor and character to your army i think as you know as befits the horus heresy well characters are what it centers around for the most part so being able to sort of make your own and build your own and use these consoles to change the way your whole army works really you know like the inclusion of a chaplain can you know mean that your army is is being built in a certain way maybe it's being led by the chaplain maybe it's a 
bunch of guys who have got a lot of fiery faith and who are really fired up whereas switching it around if you've got an army led by a master of signals it could be you know it could be a a recon core or something like that you know there's loads of opportunities to flavor your army by using these guys as well as how good they are on the tabletop so i've listed eight of them here which are my favorite eight um but you know almost all of them are good for something they all bring something to your army when you use them there isn't really the bar of one or two that maybe aren't very good but the most of the consoles are playable these eight are my favorite ones these are the ones that i think really make a big difference to the way your army plays but including consoles in your army maybe even filling your hq slots with as many consoles as you can take is just a great and cool thing to be able to do coming in in the number one spot are the humblest of the humble the humble tactical squad now, tactical squads are scoring, and scoring is a very important part of the game. There are other ways to get access to scoring units with some rights of war, and two of the units we've mentioned already in this video, but tactical squads are the main way you're going to get multiple scoring units, and they are, for most armies, compulsory as well. Now, what we're talking about here also applies to despoiler squads as well, mostly, because they're basically just tactical squads with chainswords instead of bolters. So you can also interchange most of these things if you want as well. So tactical squads can also be very good in combat too. So they go all the way up to 20 models, which does mean they are going to outnumber a lot of things because a lot of units you won't want to make big because they're very expensive, whereas tacticals are very cheap. They are kind of hard to kill as well. You know, if you get them in some cover, you got those shrouded saves potentially. You got the feel no pain from the heart of the Legion, particularly if they've got feel no pain from another source like an apothecary and that buffs them up makes them quite hard to remove and they can generally just hang around on objectives and be obnoxious and be quite difficult to kill. But on the other hand, in some Legions particularly the legions that are good in melee giving these guys a chain bayonet or maybe even a chain sword although that's a bit expensive combined with some legion rules whether that's world eaters legion rules uh empress children legion rules you know whatever it is that buffs your melee can really turn these into good combat forces as well just through sheer weight of attacks and certainly if you've got other power armor units you know terminator units might be quite tough for these to kill but if you've got other power armor units in the fight in each other a buffed up unit of these with chain bayonets and some legion bonuses can be quite a, a formidable foe as well so the tactical squad super important for the game super important for a lot of your armies and loads of different ways to play and use them during the game so a couple of honorable mentions as well that i really wanted to put on the list but didn't make it so cataphractite terminators just in general Cataphractic Terminators are just really hard to kill. You know, they got the 2 plus save, they got the 4 plus invulnerable as well, which means if you shoot them with things that go through their save, you're giving them an invulnerable. They got 2 wounds, which means lots of things are going to have to hit them twice, and they bring some really good melee weapons mostly to the battlefield, and they're not even very expensive. They're just a really, really good unit, and, you know, them and their derivatives, obviously, in, in, a, in a lot of different ways, like the command squad are just really good and also the land raider proteus as well so this is my transport of choice i think so obviously it's the only thing that can transport some units but just generally for what you pay for it you know the 220 points you pay for it it brings you four las cannons it brings you the ability to move guys around the battlefield it brings you another big brick for your guys to hide behind and also as well it's, it's reasonably tough to kill although there's lots of armies that can kill armor 14 vehicles it's also pretty tough to kill it's not super expensive while it's doing it either so i really like the land raider proteus over say the spartan which is obviously better at all these those things but a lot more expensive now to finish up there are a few guidelines that i'm going to mention here so what i've done is i've given you 10 units that are really strong and, and powerful in the game as i said earlier it doesn't necessarily mean you should just build your army from these units but you know they are all good units to have an effective force on the battlefield though you do need to use very varied, varied units and also to keep your army interesting and one of the ways that you can make sure that happens is by avoiding skew and also avoiding spam so don't spam all the same units it's you know it's kind of dull it's not the most interesting thing in the world for you and your opponent and it you know doesn't always necessarily particularly in heresy lead to you getting the best 
army you know have a think about the things you need to do on the battlefield rather than trying to find a unit that you consider the best and put play lots of them also avoid skew as well so you can avoid spamming but still skew at the same time and skew just means taking lots of the same thing so if you take lots of terminators and lots of contempt of dreadnoughts and lots of things with two plus saves you've effectively done the same thing as spamming you've made your whole army you know very similar which means that a lot of your opponent's stuff's going to be useless against them in that case anything that hasn't got ap2 that's a thing that you want to avoid that's a thing that you want to avoid for your opponent's benefit really and for the for the, to the point of having interesting games so do try to avoid doing that whilst you're building your armies even if you're looking at these interesting units and one of the things i like about this list of 10 units is all those units are good there are more units that are good as well and if you take lots of different ones of them you can still have a great army you can still have a really powerful army but your army will be varied it'll do lots of different things and be interesting and it won't be dull to play against either and finally as well let the theme guide you first so there are lots of good units and you could say i want all these units because they're great and that could be the way you build your army but if you let the the theme of your army whether that's a light theme like you know i play imperial fist so i just want lots of things that are going to sit there and, and shoot people with bolters or whether it's more heavily themed if you're more into the narrative let that be the first thing that you use to think about what units you're going to pick and then maybe use something like this like a list like this as a modifier to help you make sure that your force also ends up good whilst trying to stick into your theme because with great power comes great responsibility as we all know so try to make sure that while you are building an effective force you're also building a force that is interesting for both you and your opponent to play as well that's the end of the episode thank you very much for listening i really appreciate it i hope it was interesting if you enjoyed the content please do drop me a like and a subscribe on youtube i would really appreciate it and if you have any feedback at all or you would like to discuss anything i've talked about in the episode please do drop me a comment so thanks for listening and i'll see you all next time